Hey guys, welcome back to my series about this desktop speaker I've been working on, which I've called the Life S5. I'm finally through with the crossover design and I am now getting into the assembly of the speaker. I'm putting the crossover together and all the drivers and everything back in to make this a finished speaker. The only thing left to do is measure this speaker to confirm all my results, make sure I didn't make any errors while assembling, and to pretty much put together uh, a little report on how this speaker performs. So today we're going to look at the assembly of this thing, how I assemble the crossover, how I put the drivers in and everything, just to kind of wrap things up in terms of the aesthetics of this thing. First thing I had to do is undo my test crossover. So this is the crossover I had all wired up with alligator clips and a little bit of soldering here and there and just needed to get all my old test parts back. And uh, also I had to remove the drivers because I needed to do a little bit of work on these boxes. This process really happened quite quickly. I spent almost all day on this project but you know, undoing things is easy. Putting them back together, that's what takes a long time. These uh, woofers are in there so tight, I actually had to take the tweeter out first and then snap the woofer out. I'm going to add some feet to the bottom of these speakers. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just measuring the locations. Uh, I think it was three quarters of an inch in from each corner. Can't remember exactly. And then a little pilot hole at each of those locations. And then I went in there with, um, oh, close to a half inch bit. These feet I got, they're only a couple bucks each. They're really worth it, especially for this desktop project. They, they were exactly what I, I wanted. And they come with these threaded inserts. I wasn't a big fan of them compared to the quality of the rest of the feet. This was a relatively easy process. You just can't torque up your screwdriver too much, otherwise they'll strip easily. They'll rip right through the MDF and then that's it. And then you just assemble, you gotta, you assemble the foot with a locking nut first and then they thread into the uh, threaded insert. Okay, at this point I gotta start thinking about the terminal cup or binding posts or whatever I'm gonna use. Now, I could use just binding posts right through the wood, and in hindsight, I kind of wish I could do that, but for testing purposes, I drilled this hole right here with the intention of putting a cup or something over top of it, and so the hole would no longer be a problem. But, uh, you know, binding posts, I think, would have been really nice, just right into the wood. So, anyways, that's out. So, these are my options. I have, uh, these I've been hanging on to for years. Uh, I think they were Parts Express buyout. But they're a, a little too big for the back of this, and the gray doesn't match, so those are out. I got these uh, bi-wire posts. I think you're supposed to mount them from the inside and kind of like create a bit of a slot with your router, and then they come through the back or something. And I really have no need for bi-wiring, and I just, I'm not a fan of these, uh, so those are out. Normally, speak on is really the way I like to go, and that would look pretty good on the back of here, I think. But I just, I don't think I want speak on this time for this for this uh, application, so I'm not going to go with that this time. This would be pretty nice. I got a couple of these Dayton plates and binding posts, but they're quite big for the back of this speaker, and they're also not cheap. And I don't really want to waste money, even though I have them kicking around. It's it's money spent basically, so. I don't really want to use these either. Uh, <laughs> down to the final two here, I got spring terminals. And you know what? These would look good and be quite functional. And I'm tempted to go this way, but I, I just, I, I hate spring terminals. I probably should go this way, but I'm really leaning towards this cup. You know, this, got, this has a five-way binding post in it, even though they're really cheesy. Ah, I don't know. I'm, I'm really undecided. I think they're the same size, so maybe I'll just cut the hole and then decide later. So on the drill press, I just cut a hole. I could have used my CNC, but this is actually easier. 
CNC's are not that great. It's pretty tight, so now I have a template. Looks pretty bang on to me. Then I use double-sided sticky tape uh, on the back of this template to attach it to the back of the box. I do this for most of my rudder templates. Uh, you know, I just e even on the CNC, I, I double-sided tape it down because I just find that the quickest and easiest. A lot of people will attach it with clamps or whatever, but I used to use clamps, um, but I just found this is my preferred method now. I just check that I have it centered. I use the router with a down cutting pa pattern bit. Um, this is my go to bit. This is pretty crude, but I just use a jigsaw to take out the center hole for the cup to fit into. And I had success right off the bat. I was pretty pleased. You go wrong with this and you're in trouble, so. And it really, I was really happy with the fit. It was oh, perfect. Oh, 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 that looks good. Better than my crummy CNC can do, actually. I was gonna make grills for these. If you recall from part one, I got magnets under the laminate here. And I could still do that in the future, but to be honest, these are going to be on my desktop and I'm not really worried about kids getting to them. I'm never going to put those grills on, so I'm just going to press ahead without them for now. Here I have uh, my CNC is going to make me a little PCB for the crossover. Somehow this thing lost its way and just put a big stroke right through it like that. No idea why I did that, but that is not supposed to be there. <laughs> and you try to tell me computers don't have a mind of their own once in a while. So thankfully these little boards are only a couple bucks each and I went at it again. This is the CNC in four times mode. My CNC is not this fast. Well, it could be, maybe, but the bit would break. That's a sixteenth of an inch bit. It's just a frued straight bit. And actually, it's a little too big for this work because those holes it's making right now, they're a little bit on the big side. Not for the speaker wire, but for the like little capacitor leads and stuff, it's quite big. But it's what I have, and uh, it's more durable than a, a smaller bit. Those could snap easier. They're pretty uh, fragile. So there it is, all done. I was happy with it, the way it turned out. I made two of these. And I get a lot of questions about crossover parts and what I use. I actually went a little on the nice side for a speaker of this budget. Solon caps, and then these are, oh, I forget what these are called, acromion resistors or something. They're, they're the step up. Resistors are so cheap that I find stepping up to the nice ones is no big deal. And then Solon air core inductors for um, the uh, woofer and tweeter high pass and low pass sections. I hot glued all the parts down. Um, I recently had a comment. I have another video about making these types of crossovers, and I had a comment. Uh, the guy said, "You know, you're doing everything right. That's great, but uh, you shouldn't glue down the resistors because they can heat up and melt the glue." And that's not untrue. That he he's correct. But I still glued them down because I find that um, they don't get hot enough. I've never had it a problem, and even if the glue melts, just the solder leads, resistors are so light that the solder leads will actually still hold it in place. Uh, the inductors are heavy, so I do zip strap them down. That's why I had the CNC make two little slots on either side of the inductor, so that I could do that. I also get people asking what kind of solder I use, so this is 60, oh man, is it 6040 or 6337 maybe? 6337 I think. And um, here I am just zipping all the parts together. This is when it really happens. Uh, I, I like this part. Not because I enjoy soldering, I actually don't, but it just feels like accomplishment is happening. All the parts are on and then zip, 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 it all gets um, soldered together and ready to use soon. Right now I'm doing the uh, wire lead for one of the wires and they're a little more copper, you know, thicker. I forget if I use 16 gauge or something, but uh, they just require a little more heat and solder. The cap leads are really quick, just zap, zap.
Anyways, you get the point. Once I'm done, I clip all the leads off because no one wants all those extra leads sticking out. They can cause shorts too. And then I load it into the enclosure. There it is in the enclosure. I actually use hot glue to fix it, which I'd prefer to use screws, but I don't think I could have got a screwdriver in there. So if I ever have to remove it, I gotta snap all that hot glue off and that could be, I could break the board actually. I use polyfill for stuffing on these. Uh, I usually use regular old pink insulation to be honest, but I had this kicking around. And then I just got to solder on the uh, drivers and terminal cup and stuff like that. These tweeters gave me issues. I think I might have heated up the voice coil on one of them, but so far it's performing okay. It shouldn't be a problem. And then I used Allen head screws to put the terminal cup in and all the drivers as well. I think these look really good and I like using them. They're not cheap, but... For how many you use in speaker building, it's worth it to me. I was very careful to not slip and run my drill into the tweeter. That has happened before. I wasn't happy with the tweeter cutout. They didn't sit perfectly flush, or the circle was, and the circle wasn't uh, very circular either. The woofer cutout worked out really good though and everything came together nicely. I'm really happy with the way these look and I like how the feet stand off the speaker as well. Here I am just um, wiring them up. I don't like how small the terminal cups are. It's hard to get the wire in there and turn those uh, nuts but it is what it is. This is a small speaker so that's how it goes. And these are little plates or bases that the spiked feet get to sit on. You just adjust the feet up and down and then use that lock nut to set it down tight. And then um, the feet sink down into the plate nice and easy and makes it look a little better too. Okay, well thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you like the look of the spe speaker as much as I do. And uh, I hope you'll stick around for part six to see how this thing performs and how I go about measuring the performance metrics of this speaker. I'm really happy with it. It was a good project and ultimately I think I met my design goals. It sounds good. It works great for a desktop. Uh, there aren't many designs out there that are actually specifically designed for desktop use. Many of them are small and they get used on desktops but they have really high crossovers and in my opinion just don't really hit on all the points in my opinion. Not to mention we got amazing quality drivers in this speaker at about a hundred bucks per speaker. Just a few reminders guys, uh, I can be found on Instagram, it's impulse underscore audio, I'm pretty sure, um, on Instagram and you can see pics of things I'm working on, things I'm going to be doing videos about, and just other things that I don't cover, um, you can find me on there. I don't post often, but I, I try to just keep it gradual, you know, some people post like three times a day, I'm not into that, so you won't get spammed if you, if you join, if you follow me on there. Um, also, uh, do subscribe if you haven't, that's important. You can get notifications and everything, helps me out too. Like the video, all that stuff, and please share this video, share this series on any forums or Facebook or anywhere that you think it might be useful. Thanks guys, please do that. I know that sounds like needy or something, whatever. Every YouTuber does it, so tough luck.